All right, so this is a quick tutorial about completing the square, um, which is going to help you a lot with quadratic functions. Uh, so the first thing we're going to talk about here is um, why is square? What is so special about a square? Well, the square is actually the basis of a quadratic function, as you can see right here with our function where f of x equals x squared. This is one of the simplest uh, quadratic functions that you can have. And this f of x would just represent the area of this square, um, which would be length times width or x times x in this case. Um, which would get x squared. Now when you want to solve for x whenever you have uh, a quadratic problem, um, one, of the thing, one of the key things that you're going to use and, you know, based on the square is going to be um, a square root. So in this case when we want to solve for x, um, I would take the square root of, of both sides here. Um, if this cancels the squared. And on this side you'll have a plus or a minus because whatever answer you get, it can be the, the, the positive of that answer or the negative because a positive times a positive is a, is a positive and a negative times a negative is a positive as well. So it could be either positive or negative. This is also why quadratic functions have two answers uh, because, of, because of this uh, positive or negative uh, principle here. Uh, so just solving for x, you end up getting the uh, positive or negative square root of f of x. Okay, but what, what if we do a more advanced square? In this case, it's not much more advanced, but it's just x plus n by x plus n and n is greater than zero. The area would look like this, x plus n quantity squared. Uh, to solve for x, what you would need to do is take the square root of both sides, that gets rid of the squared here, and you end up with the same thing we had last time, positive or negative, the square root of f of x. Um, simplifying it further, you have x plus n, and then to get rid of this n, because it's adding, you just do the opposite and subtract, and you end up with x equals positive or negative square root of f of x minus n. But what instead of a square, what if we went to a rectangle? Say a rectangle that was x plus n by x plus m for its dimensions. n is still greater than zero and m and n are not equal to each other because if they were, you would have a square. Um, but m is also greater than zero as well. The area function would look like this, f of x equals the quantity x plus n times the quantity x plus m. But the issue is it's really hard to solve this. It's actually impossible to solve this unless you use completing the square. So what I did to kind of show this is if you um, if you expand this out here, you have x squared plus mx plus nx plus mn, but you have x in three different places. Um, you can simplify it a little further by doing the m plus n, just factoring out the x here, but you still end up with two x's, uh, which is really hard to solve for. Previously we had one that was under, uh, under uh, the, the squared, where this time we have two separate ones. This one has an order of two and this one has an order of one. So we have to do kind of a little uh, manipulation to be able to actually solve for this. So what we're going to do to kind of show this, I'm going to go back to our advanced square where it was x plus, x plus n by x plus n. And I'm going to expand this out. And you'll notice something that the b term, you know, based on standard form of quadratics, the b term is 2n and the c term is n squared. This will always happen with a perfect square. When you're finding the area of a square, I shouldn't say perfect, but a square. We'll always have 2n for the b and c will always be n squared. And you could use this to actually make a square out, or partial square, out of a rectangle. Um, in essence what you would do is you would just divide this b term by 2 and then square it to get c, which I have right here. b divided by 2 quantity squared would actually be equal to c. So we're going to try to use this and manipulate our rectangle function, or area, of, area function, to figure out um, if we could solve for x for a rectangle. So let's go back to our rectangle which is uh, x plus n by x plus m. So that's our area right there and then if you expand it out you end up with something like this simplified um, x squared plus x times quantity m plus n times mn. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this mn, this c term right, right here and just kind of put it on the other side, oh, this is the b term right here and we're going to put it on the other side of the equation so you end up having f of x minus mn here. So you end up having an a term and a b term right here on this side. So there's no perfect squares yet, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this b and if we know that if we divide it by 2 and square it and add that as our c term, we'll end up with a, a square that you can actually use. So that's what I'm going to do right here. 
I divided the m plus n by 2 and squared it and then added it to the right side of the equation. But since I added it to the right side of the equation, I have to add it to the other side. So if you notice, both sides will have this m plus n over 2 squared on it. I just basically took this line right here and added both those terms onto it. Okay, so now that I know that this side right here is a square, what I can do is, is factor it out basically into something that looks like this, x plus m plus n over 2 quantity squared. And this is, this is what ends up helping us solve for x here because now I can take the square root of this to get rid of the squared and I end up with the x plus m plus n over 2 on this side by itself and then the square root um, of this whole mess right here. And from here, it's pretty obvious to, to, to see that to get rid of this m plus n over 2, all you have to do is subtract it from both sides, and you end up solving for x. And then you have this huge, long equation, but it shows the value in completing the square and how it can help you solve for um, other quadratics. It doesn't necessarily have to be a, a perfect square to solve for it. So I hope that helps. If not, uh, please let me know.